Welcome to the Sideline Squeeze, everybody. I'm Lindsay Aarons. And I'm Victoria Daly. So we're going to start off with Thursday Night Football happened last night. It was the Bills against the mm -hmm. Dolphins. A big game for the Bills. After like that close Cardinals game, they started off so bad versus the Cardinals, so that I was like, what's happening to the Bills this year? But last night, they proved that they are the Buffalo Bills when they pulled out a win versus the Dolphins, 31-10. to James Cook went off in this game. He was incredible. He had three touchdowns, which... He only had 11 carries for 78 yards, but his impact was just felt so much every time the ball was in his hands that it didn't even matter that that stat line, mm -hmm. you know, the yardage isn't that much, but three yeah. touchdowns. When I saw three touchdowns, I was like, wow, he must have went off crazy with them 78 yards. I, I was like, hmm, that just shows how powerful he was. And I'm, and after, what did he have? Um, 71 yards, I think, versus uh, the Cardinals. Mm -hmm. And... Did he even have a touchdown that game? I'm not sure that he did. So definitely yeah. big week for him, big turnaround. The Bills' defense also stepped up, forcing three turnovers, all of which were Tua Tagovailoa interceptions. So rough week for Tua as he also suffered yet another concussion. It's hard. It's literally so heartbreaking when athletes get injured. I think we saw that scene where Tua was going into the locker room and coach of the Dolphins, Mike McDaniels, came over and kissed Tua on the head. And Pulsum. it's so heartbreaking. So heartbreaking. It's really sad for Tua, especially because he's just, this is such a common theme in his career. They actually named the concussion protocol in 2022. It's also known as the Tua rule because it was because of what happened to Tua years ago. That, well, I think his first concussion was 2021, but then mm -hmm. 2022 he suffered that horrible one versus the Bengals where mm -hmm. he got hit and he was just laying there and like you saw his hands going and everything and then he had to get carted off. It's And then he had another one. That right, yeah, right after. It's been a rough career in terms of injuries for Tua, specifically concussions. So definitely, you know, just really sad. And I don't know, do you think that Tua should keep playing through all these major head injuries every year? Like, I know he's a young quarterback. Mm -hmm. He got drafted only four years ago. But how long can you take a career like that? And is it sustainable? He's so young. And it's so heartbreaking to have to retire from the sport that you've grown up playing and you love at such a young age. But for, for his mental health, like, I don't want him to get, like, worse and have all these diseases, like, you well, know, CTE brain is a yeah, huge CTE. issue, so I'm hoping that that doesn't happen to him. It's just really heartbreaking, you know, because of the fact that our concussion protocol is named after him. Like, mm -hmm. that's insane, says you know. And yeah. I think he is good, but I think he is inconsistent, too. Agree with you on that. Yeah. I actually, this might be a crazy hot take, so I want to get your opinion on this. Tua was taken with the fifth pick of the 2020 NFL Draft, and everybody knew that the Dolphins were either going to take him or Justin Herbert. Herbert ended up falling to the sixth pick, and the Los Angeles Chargers took him. However, my take, I think that if the Dolphins took Justin Herbert instead of Tua Tagovailoa, they would, al they would be Super Bowl contenders if not already having won a Super Bowl. Just because, you know, you have pieces like Tyreek Hill, yeah. you have Devin A. Chain, you got uh, Jalen Waddle. They just have so many offensive pieces that, you know, they should be contenders, but the inconsistency at quarterback is what I think is really holding them back. But what do you think, Victoria? I think Tua, he's powerful and he runs, like he's quick. But, yeah, I think there's, like you said, they have so many powerful wide receivers. Like Tyree Kill, like... Best receiver in football. Yeah, how... And I think it goes back to that it has to be an offensive problem. And if it's not with the wide receivers, it has to be with the quarterback. And I like Tua. I think he's I think he's great, but I think he is inconsistent. He has to, you know, hit these people more. And you can't just be relying on the run game. Um, but I don't know. I think Justin Herbert is good, too. But, you know, he had that big injury. Um, True. To, I don't know. I, I like the environment of the Dolphins with Tua, and I think, you know, him and Coach Mike McDaniel's relationship is so powerful, but I think now that he's getting so injured, that's the problem. Where it's like, if you had Justin Herbert, you know, maybe he'd be more consistent. He wouldn't be getting all these injuries. With the Dolphins, you know, they have such high expectations, and then, boom, Tua gets injured. You're stuck with a backup. It's a whole different game plan now that I feel so bad because it's they, sh they have the potential, but with these injuries, it just doesn't get there. I totally agree. And also, at, like you said, Mike McDaniel and Tua have a great relationship. I know Tyreek Hill and Tua have a mm -hmm. great relationship. The players love him. So I understand, you know, chemistry is a lot on a team. And I get why Tua, you know, is their guy because of that. But if we're looking from a standpoint of just pure skill, 
I think Justin Herbert is probably a more skilled quarterback. He happens to be on a team that doesn't have mm -hmm. the same offensive That's pieces, especially like the Chargers lost like all their offensive mm -hmm. pieces in this offseason. Keenan Allen going to the Bears, like who do they have? You know, Justin Herbert just never really had a fair shot, I feel mm -hmm. like. And if he were behind, you know, a solid offense like the Dolphins have, I think it just would be a totally outcome and I, different outcome. And I mm -hmm. think maybe they'd win a Super Bowl. And jumping from one powerful quarterback to another great quarterback, uh, Syracuse's Kyle McCord. He's doing amazing. He's been incredible. And I don't want to jinx anything, <laughs> but after his the first game versus Ohio last week, Georgia Tech, he's had eight passing touchdowns, four in each game. Actually, those eight passing touchdowns lead all of college football. At least they did going into this week. Mm -hmm. Now there was a Thursday night game last night, so a quarterback from, I believe, Texas State overtook him with nine. But McCord ha led the entire nation in touchdowns. When has Syracuse done that? <laughs> this is unprecedented. This has never happened before for Syracuse football to have a quarterback like this. It's like Donovan McNabb. And between those two games, he had 735 yards. This we've, is like NFL numbers over here. <laughs> we've never seen anything like this. It's definitely just a great experience to have as a student at this school because we've never experienced such mm -hmm. hype around a football team like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were ranked in 2022. But I'm wondering, after having, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in college football, we beat a ranked team already, do you think Syracuse should be ranked? I think we got to wait till Stanford next week. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that was a sneaky win for us. I think we really pulled it off, and I have such high expectations for us now after that. But, you know, Stanford is also, you know, a decent team. Um, the first game, they beat well, Cal Poly. Cal uh, Poly's not yeah. super, you know, Great. strong of a school, so I'm not yeah. intimidated by that. But yeah. they did hold their own against TCU, That's even though they lost. Say. It was only a touchdown, you yeah, know, difference in that game. Scene. So, I think we got to see. I think it's two weeks. Like, I don't want to be that person that's like, oh, we're amazing. We should be ranked. Like, no, we got to give them more time. It's still, you know, there's still a lot of excitement that that could also be a big like motivation, the excitement. So I think we wait and see what happens next week. But if it, this energy keeps going up, if if Kyle McCord keeps this up. You know, I think then eventually we better hit the ranks. <laughs> I agree with you. I actually also agree that I don't think we're ready for, you know, being ranked in the AP poll mm -hmm. just yet, especially because our special teams really struggled in that last yeah. game. It was, you know, we should have won by a landslide. We were up by 17 in the fourth quarter. Then all of a sudden the special teams just collapsed. You know, during that game they had a punt blocked. They also had a field goal blocked, so that wasn't good. And then, you know, once the defense started to collapse towards the end of the game, Georgia Tech had scored and narrowed the gap from 17 to 10. Then all of a sudden, I believe that they also got, like, got a defensive stop on us, got the ball back, scored again. And I was like, oh, my God, this I is know what's happening. This is a close game. There was an onside kick also, which Georgia Tech, after they had scored that first touchdown, they kicked it, then received it. So at that point, I was like, our special teams is just not performing yeah. up to standard if we're, you know, giving up an onside kick, which isn't easy to recover. No, that, that really scared me. That is not good, you know, because yeah. at that point, they received the onside kick, scored a touchdown, and it was a three-point game. Mm -hmm. Luckily, there were only two minutes left, and Syracuse was able to get the ball and just run that clock out. But otherwise, the momentum really shifted in that game from being all Syracuse in the beginning to Georgia Tech just totally taken over at the end. We got lucky no, that time ran out. So, I don't know. I think, like you said, it was a sneaky win. I don't think it would have been a win had, you know, the time not been on our side in that situation. Mm -hmm. So, I think the special teams is really going to have to – work on that with this bye week, take that opportunity, just have a full reset and try to prepare for Stanford next week. And I think lastly, going from one field to another, Syracuse men's soccer plays tonight versus number 17, Virginia Tech. I'm so excited. I think it's going to be a great game. I'm actually going to go there tonight. It's at 7.30 tonight. I went to the last game versus Lemoyne, who, you know, is a lower D1 school. And the amount of people who came out for that game alone was crazy. So I think tonight it's going to be packed, the soccer stadium. So I got to head out there later tonight and get going there. As you should. Okay. So, yes, as she said, soccer game will be tonight. Everybody head to the soccer stadium on South Campus. Just pack it and let's root for the orange. Mm -hmm. So thank you for tuning in to this week's edition of the Sideline Squeeze. I'm Lindsay Ahrens. And I'm Victoria Daly. We'll see you next week.